Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to, I don't know if we can consider this culty news, but sure, we'll call it culty news with Cults of Consciousness. I am joined by my mom today. Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joined by my mom and Amanda here oh. in the studio. We have a lot to talk about. So my mom was here for my baby shower that we had today. And then as YouTubers were like, well, can't stop working. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided to bring mom on because we're talking about Cody Brown, Sister Wives, how he is technically not even a polygamist anymore because all of his wives have left him. I am coming from the perspective of, I kid you not, have never seen the show, but my mom here has watched every episode, and Amanda here came from a fundamentalist polygamist sect separate from the AUB, the one that they originally came from, Cody Brown and Sister Wives, but we're going to get her perspective on how glorifying this polygamist lifestyle is actually really damaging to those who are in a polygamous sect that is harmful. So with all that said, thanks for joining us. Sorry we were a little bit late <laughs> running through some technical difficulties, but right after this, we are going to be redirected. You will be, if you are still in this live, when it ends, you will be redirected to Amanda's channel where we're going to talk about polygamy within the mainstream Mormon church. We're going to get my mom's perspectives on that as well and how things have changed throughout the years. So we got a lot to talk about. And if you haven't already, go subscribe to Amanda. Amanda Loves Rachel is her at. and Or you can just search Amanda Ray and she'll pop up. And hit the like button so more people can find this live. Thanks for joining us. And all right, Amanda, let's start with this. Okay. <laughs> Where do you want to begin? Because you've been doing some reaction videos on this guy. Yeah. Also, I haven't met your mom, too, so I wanted to say hi to oh. her. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> nice to finally meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm such a fan. You know, I, was, I was like, our mom should like have a, a mom date together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, but yeah, so I was born in obviously like the order, which is a different uh, polygamous cult. But uh, we had a lot of people that were from the AUB group. And we also like co-mingled with the AUB group because we were related to a lot of them. So um I, I can't assume that Cody Brown's church is exactly like the order, but from what I've watched and how they portray themselves and how their modesty rules are and all of this stuff, it's, it just really, it's so parallel, even to down to like the words that they say, it's very similar to how the order kind of operates and the order mm -hmm. people are. So I haven't watched every single episode like uh, your mom has, <laughs> but um <laughs> just the i think i've only seen four or five episodes and in those four or five episodes i've realized like it's it's probably pretty easy to assume you know the the culture because of where i came from mm -hmm. and um i you can really tell how like the first episodes they were really trying to gloss over and like make it seem like a really really uh beautiful thing this polygamy the higher law it's a beautiful thing but um I really think that that was all fake. I remember watching it when I was in the order and feeling like that they were lying because it wasn't the reality of polygamy. And now like 17, 18 seasons later, we're finally seeing, you know, the truth of it. Mm. Um, so I'm happy about that because I really think that the beginning seasons of uh, Sister Wives was really damaging because it was giving this false idea of polygamy being this healthy, happy family. When in reality, it's it's very sexist towards the women. It's very like build the man up, but let's step on the girls and the kids, right? Mm -hmm. It's a uh, I could go on and on and on and on, <laughs> but I want your yeah yeah. I want to hear from your perspective, Amanda. Do you feel like the way they've been trying to portray the show in the first seasons is how your group would try and portray polygamy to outsiders? Yeah, definitely. And I remember uh, men in the order really liking the show because it, it was like, they it, they almost acted like because Cody Brown is doing this show, we're going to have, as polygamists, we're going to have more rights and we're going to, they always, these polygamous sex, and, and Cody Brown is no different because you can see him talking about on the show how, how they want to act like the world hates polygamists and we, we're, everyone's being so prejudiced against us when in reality, do you see any other color but white in those religions? Do you, who, who is the real prejudice, right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason why, um, well, nowadays people are like, this is not healthy. But um, in, the, in the order, there was a lot of like excitement over it being portrayed the way that it was or whatever. And then it was also like, 
Um, I, I think that that is exactly how they wanted the world to, to think that polygamy was. All these women that are just happily living together, all these kids that are just getting along, and the husband's just this great guy. But even from episode one, there was so many similarities in how he carries himself and how everyone else carries himself when they're around him. It's so obvious that he is, like he, he, he repeats this over and over, I wanna be the head of the house, the man of the house. That's a, a huge thing in the order. The man is the head of the house, meaning he has the final say, which where's the equality in that, right? Mm -hmm. I, I said this in my review video, it was like, why do you get to be the man of the house, the head of the house, when the women are the ones actually in the homes, like 24 seven, you know? Yeah. They want to come home and they want to the rules. Exactly. Yeah. So what was your perspective of the show? Because you were still in the order when this came out, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I remember. How did it affect you? I think I was like, I want to say 14, 15 when I discovered it. And I just remember thinking that they were lying. And I've said this on my channel, like, I'm, I, I don't like the show because they lie. And I didn't remember what they lied about. And so I finally rewatched the first episode. And that was the only one I watched when I was younger. And I was like, oh, I don't think it was that they blatantly lied. It was that they were just pretending, you know, like they had this like show of what it it, it, it is. So mm -hmm. I never liked it when I was, because I was at the age where I was, um, you know, kind of being forced to go on dates with my cousin or like uh, consider that, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, I had gone to the AUB church. I even had a friend in the AUB church later on who invited me to the church because I was like, there, there's all these polygamists that are like, but but you can live it right. I know there's all these polygamists living it wrong, but there is a right way to live God's true, you mm -hmm. know, law. But where are they? <laughs> So I got invited yeah. to the AB group because my friend was like, oh, but they live it better over there. I went to the church that Cody Brown goes to and I'm like, this is just like my church. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Same thing, different brand. Yeah. Um, so I'm interested. You were saying that in the first episode, there were things that you were clearly picking up on that were dangerous or not OK or you felt they were being shady about. But I feel like it would be a lot more obvious to you because you are in that same lifestyle. So I'm going to throw it to mom because I wonder, as someone who didn't live polygamy, mm -hmm. did you catch on on any of those red flags or was there something that seemed off about it from the first seasons? You know, right from the beginning, I just felt like, um, wow, here's this guy and, and they're just trying to be themselves and let them be that way, even though I didn't live polygamy. I thought at first I thought he you know he seems like a good guy and he he seems like he really cares about his wives and his children and but as the seasons went on and on and on I started seeing this anger in him that mm. was scary and the way he acted is though it was more now it's he's losing control in the early seasons I felt like he had control of his his wives and his children and so he was kinder at the end, I saw that he lost control, so therefore he became very angry. Yeah. To where I I wanted to reach through the television and just <laughs> strangle him. I'm like, <laughs> what kind of a guy is this? It, it was horrible. I didn't like what I saw. And I think it was his fear. He was losing control. Yeah, because you were mentioning that these women started gaining their independence once mm -hmm. they started gaining mm -hmm. fame and creating mm -hmm. businesses. And that's something that, Amanda, I want to get your perspective on too, because that's not okay like women are supposed to have any uh -huh. independence or individuality or anything and now his wives are experiencing the effects of hollywood and this went on for what 18 seasons or something uh -huh. it's been on for such a yes. long time and so do you think that that played a role in his demeanor or do you think that he was just hiding it before yeah and and your mom brought up a really good point and i just watched this episode where janelle said janelle's the the second wife um uh -huh she's the blonde one she was like i've never seen cody act like this this is not the man i married this is exactly yeah. what she, this is not the man i married but i was like this is the man you married but exactly what you're saying he just had the control and now that he does he's a narcissist in my opinion he's a narcissist mm -hmm. and when they don't have control of the situation they will freak out they will do mm -hmm. anything to get that control back and you see him unravel afterwards and, and it's very obvious that these women were raised to serve the man, you know, like Christine says it in the very first episode of the first season, I've always wanted to be a third wife, you know, like they were raised and bred for this life. 
Mm-hmm. I do think that the show and being more um, exposed to the outside world made them realize, oh my gosh, like, why are we doing this? It doesn't mm-hmm. make sense to be constantly having people ask them questions. I, I guarantee you that made them be like having to ask themselves the questions that they probably never were asked, you know, because that religion, mm-hmm. like in at least in my experience in the order, I wasn't asked, do you want to live polygamy? I was asked, you know, which wife would you rather be? Because you're going to, you know? And sometimes it wasn't even like a choice of which one you're going to be. It's whatever God's going to give you. So yeah. then to have that exposure and have outsiders ask them these questions that they've probably never been asked before. And then like, it, it was a good thing. The show was a really good thing for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I can speak on my experience of how it affected me, the show, because I was still a practicing Mormon until 12 years ago. And so I remember moving to Vegas and I think that they lived there at the time that I lived there. And so many people were asking me questions about Mormonism because of it. And so this is like a really tame damaging effects. And then I want to go into years, Amanda, because I think it's going to be more extreme. But I remember getting so frustrated with people being like, oh, you're Mormon. So how many moms like that whole thing? And I'm like, ah, curse that stupid TV show because this isn't Mormonism. And I was so against it, even though I didn't really know the history and how, oh, like the stupid things that polygamy does to the church. And we're going to talk about that on your channel, Amanda, within mainstream Mormonism. But I just remember being so annoyed that they were misrepresenting this entire religion that I was part of and that I held so dearly, even though it was kind of culty as well. And we talk about that on this channel, but the effects that it had on me, I was just constantly angry about it when people asking me questions about the polygamy thing. And so I wondered how it affected you if bringing polygamy into the limelight, into television, mainstream media, did you start getting people asking you questions more about polygamy and did it make you angry at all or what was that like yeah i definitely i remember it was usually men who would it it was very normalized to whenever because they they would find out i'm from a polygamous group and Mm -hmm. they would say oh where do i sign up how do i get more wives like it was a funny joking thing and I oh, get, that's annoying. Right. It, it's it's like Cody Brown has this like fake life of you can get all these wives and live happily ever after. But that's not reality. And when these men would joke like that, they weren't realizing they were making a joke on my abuse. Right. Like that was something I was forced like. And you're now like, oh, how do I get in on the oppression? You know what I mean? So I would hold my tongue, but it came to a point where I just had the, the same comeback. Oh, do you like sleeping with your sisters? Because my cult does. <laughs> and you <laughs> if you like. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, Amanda's brand of fundamental Mormonism is incestuous. They're known for marrying up in the bloodline. So marrying closer, marrying your uncle or your half-brother or half-sister. It's extremely common. And so for her, and I'm putting words into your mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong, but seeing that played out on screen and then having these comments is really insensitive because this is something that's like a daily horror for you hoping that you're not assigned to a half brother or a cousin and then you have people making jokes and making light you have this tv show that is glorifying this way of life Mm -hmm. and simultaneously you have a society who is becoming more lax about it, right? The idea of it, like, oh, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe we shouldn't be looking into the order in these groups. They seem to be doing just fine. Maybe everything's great. Do you feel like the public perception shift also affected things being done about your own community or being prosecuted in your own community? Yeah, well, I I got very scared when I, because I noticed a shift for sure for like, a lot of people thinking that polygamy was a choice and um i know right this, and it scared me and that's why i i continue to want to be on escaping polygamy and continue to talk about it because it scared me how how like lenient people were on on these little girls getting groomed to be polygamous you know what i mean it it, it was like this is not okay and i don't know why everyone wants to believe this whole quote which is why i'm so glad that their their downfall is happening on tv like honestly that's the yeah. one i'm getting <laughs> Brown is that he's publicly doing this so that we can all learn from this. But um, 
I think that that was very damaging at the time. And it, it made, I, I remember people commenting, well, if gay marriage can be legalized, why can't polygamy? People that were yeah. had nothing to do with polygamy were saying that. And I'm like, you don't understand. There's a huge difference between two consenting males marrying and a man, like, has anyone seen Tom Green? Like the Tom Green documentary where he was courting these underage women ended up in prison for like, he got his 15 year old wife pregnant. Like that's the reality of it. It's not two mm -hmm. consenting adults, you know, that love each other, mm -hmm. that just want to be together. It's, it's a, oppression, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and we talk about the coercive decision-making because a lot of times in these groups, especially in mainstream Mormonism, the psychology is, oh, you have a choice. We're not forcing you to follow the rules. You can leave at any time. But a lot of that is that psychological prison that they put you in where, sure, you can leave at any time, but you're never going to see your family in heaven ever again. And there's all of these rules that are associated with your choices. And so are they really making these choices? Are they being coerced? Are they being manipulated? You said, Amanda, they were being groomed from a young age to just believe, as you were, that this is how it will be, not would you like to be a plural wife? So, Mom, I want to hear from your perspective. When you're watching the show, did you feel like they had a choice or did you feel like they were kind of manipulated into wanting that lifestyle? You know, I think a, a lot of them, I think, were raised up as far as that was what was to happen that they were to you know marry just probably like a lot of their family members had been um i know some of them i know like robin i know really really wanted to live the polygamy law and i think the other ones so i i feel like when they throughout the at first they started out being under the control and not and they and the, i agree with amanda they tried to i think glorify it and not really show what or the how they are. really felt yeah. because when you go down through the seasons you find out that there was a lot of animosity between several of them you know th throughout from the beginning and when they finally had a voice and and I think through the public I think they realized they do have a voice and I am I love them all the women I I'm so proud of them for finally really standing up to him especially I I love Janelle and and she's so level-headed and, and just so gracious. And when she, and of course, Christine and all of them, Mary, I, I love them all. But when Janelle really stood up to him, I was like, yes, just finally I wanted her because she, I think she had such loyalty towards him and she was really trying to make the marriage work. And when she stood up to him, I was proud of her. And I feel like <laughs> they have a equal say in everything. And he, he lost control. And yeah. So let's talk, well, before we go into that, because you said that Robin is the one who wanted to live the law of mm -hmm. polygamy, but all of that had to do with her eternal salvation, right? Or it wasn't just because she wanted to do it. Yeah. I And I don't know. She came from, she had three children before okay. and from another marriage and so married into the family and they all openly accepted her into the family. And I think that was wonderful. And, but then I think she either she got blamed or was blamed. I don't know. And nobody really knows the story. A lot of the things felt, everybody felt that she was the reason that Cody was doing and acting the way he was, especially when COVID hit and that Robin was kind of the leading, you know, force behind was it. Was she the favorite? Uh -huh. Is that why? I, I believe so. And I, I believe that, but I think she was truly saddened when all the wives left and now she's there with him living. <laughs> Alone, and that's not what she really wanted. She wanted to live that. Yeah, but also it's funny because as you're talking, I'm like, well, that makes sense that she would want to live polygamy if she's the favorite. Yes, <laughs> like, because he if, was always at her house. Yeah, if you're the one being yeah. the most, uh, or if you're benefiting Favored. the most, <laughs> of course you're going to be like, this is great, guys. Yeah. Why are you complaining? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amanda, did you did you uh, watch Robin at all? Did you notice that she was favored or was it similar? Because I know we talk about in the order that wives are definitely favored. Yeah. And that's what I said. My first reaction to the first season, I said, there's always a favorite wife. Like, mm -hmm. and I've said this multiple times, like, I don't care who you are, where you come from. Mm -hmm. There's always a favorite. Whether, and sometimes it moves around. Sometimes this wife's the favorite for right now because she's pleasing him the most. Right. But then it comes out that Robin is the favorite. And it's very obvious because you see Cody making excuses for COVID or whatever to be at, at Robin's house more. And I do think that, cause I'm watching Robin get very upset with the women leaving. And I'm like, wait, why wouldn't she want them to leave? But I think that Robin is having her own 
inner um kind of like her realizations of cody because if you think about it if, if oh, yeah you know what i mean like you see someone that doesn't even want mm -hmm. your man and then you're like wait maybe i don't want him either you know what i mean <laughs> or seeing him treat a woman that in, in such a way that like, then it can bring these fears that he could treat you that way one day or um that like how could he do that or you know what i mean there's i also noticed too whenever christine would bring up comments or janelle would bring up comments it's almost like it made robin think she never thought mm -hmm. about those things until they brought them up mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. it's true it's interesting yeah be like once one leaves and then the other the rest are kind of like uh and, and, and you do see like they're they they act like it's their it was really sad to see when Christine first left, which which like praise her to be the first one because that's got to mm -hmm. be hard. But also like a lot of them made it about themselves. Like you're leaving us. How dare you? Very mm -hmm. much like when I left the order, like how dare you throw us away when it, and we, no one asked, how is Christine being affected by this? How is right. Christine? You know what I mean? It was all about them. And I think that mm -hmm. a big part of that was they deep down, they probably didn't want to say this on the show, but deep down they're probably like, What's the church going to think of us now? <laughs> How's our staff? Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this. And I know some of it's speculation because there's some facts like the, they were excommunicated from AUB for doing the show. Some people are saying, no, they're still going to church. What was your inside scoop on the religious side of it? Because they, I mean, really, I feel like this only reason they were doing it is because of religious beliefs, right? Polygamy, yeah. Definitely. But I, so I, um, I knew someone who had left the AB group who knew that family personally and said that Cody Brown and his wives like went to the leadership and asked if it was okay to take this opportunity with TLC. And then the church said, no, we, mm -hmm. we don't want to be publicizing this, you know, sacred thing or whatever. But then Cody did it anyways. And, and I was hearing that he was on like weird standing with the church. But when I went to go visit the church, I think this was like, they were already four seasons into the show and his kids were like at the church. I remember seeing like one of, I don't know if it was Christine's kids or what, but someone was there. And so at that point it was like, okay, so the church is still allowing them here, right? Mm -hmm. But then I'm hearing comments and maybe someone in the, in the comments in the chat knows this but i've heard multiple followers say um sorry like subscribers <laughs> it sounds like culty the followers uh, <laughs> subscribers were saying that he got kicked out or he's not even uh, affiliated with the church so they don't even know why he's bringing up the church because he was saying when when christine tried to divorce him he was like i don't even know if the church is going to let us get divorced mm -hmm. and so i don't know he must have some affiliation right i feel like in true culty fashion the church would be like, no, we excommunicated him just because they don't want that press. But maybe they secretly let him continue going and being a part of the church because I can't imagine he would keep going if he was excommunicated. Yeah. That wouldn't make any sense. And why he would continue practicing polygamy if he's no longer a part of that. Because if you're a part of mainstream Mormonism, they will excommunicate you if you practice polygamy now. So I'm just trying to figure out the religious decisions behind all of that and why he would continue. I mean, why does any guy want to have multiple wives? Sure. But the women themselves, if they're not part of a church, what are they getting out of this? Because if you're excommunicated, your eternal salvation is already out the window anyway. And that's yeah. the whole point mm -hmm. of practicing polygamy is the mm -hmm. eternal salvation. Right. So that's why I think that, that they were pretty involved in the church. They just didn't cause, cause knowing how much the leadership didn't want him to be on the show, there's a reason that's probably the reason why they're not really filming anything at the church. You never see them go to church, right? Yeah, you don't. Never. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. never do. They have to have been somewhat affiliated though for the women to keep striving for that polygamy. Mm -hmm. Um but then mm -hmm. like now there there is no polygamy now, right? I'm hearing I haven't seen this 18th season, but I'm hearing he's he's all all the way down trickled down to just Robin yeah. That's true. All, from what I understand, there's three divorces now, and it's just him and Robin. And even in the last season that I watched, and I and I understand there might be a, another season, but the one I watched, they said that um, when you listen to Robin and when you hear her them ask her the question, "How do you feel about you know him now?" You can see some doubt with her, like because all the anger now is going to her. 
and and he had rage. I mean, real rage. And I thought he's got to just chill. It's his he lost the control of that family. And so now he, all he has is her and her children. And a lot of his children from like Janelle and the other families have kind of left him and they're not really in, you know, communication with him. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. It's really sad for him. So I don't know. I, I wonder about Robin if, if we'll down the line, see her leave. I don't know. Yeah, she's the one that really wanted to practice polygamy. Yeah, and is. who would want to marry now after seeing who he wow. really is? We have I, someone here. Oh, sorry, you, were you going to say something? No, I, I just heard that some someone was telling me that uh, he's on the hunt for another wife. Did you hear yeah, that? I, yeah, I heard that he would be willing to take on another wife. And I think Robin would probably be happy for that. Um, but yeah, I don't, after watching that show, I don't know how anybody would ever want to be his wife. Yeah. Ever. And wasn't there something mommy were saying that he legally divorced his first wife so that he could officially marry Robin? Yeah, because Robin had three children. And so the only way that he could marry her and get, a, be able to adopt the three children was to divorce Mary, his first wife. So he divorced her and yet Mary still stayed, you know, faithful and everything with in the family, but um, then he was able to marry Robin. So now he's legally married to Robin. So he's in a legally monogamous <laughs> relationship. Yeah. <laughs> marriage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so interesting. We yeah. did have Angelica here. Hey, Angelica, we've been chatting back and forth in the comments recently. She was saying Cody Brown has literally said he's done with polygamy and it's not for him. Did uh, you hear anything like that? That's not Maybe it was me. an interview. I, yeah, or... yeah, I'm not sure. May, he, she could be right. Yeah, I mean, I'm I just he always no, I just <laughs> sorry, I just feel like no. he's so back and forth that I never trust. <laughs> <him. laughs> yeah, okay, let me bring on a few super chats because I've been ignoring the comments. Sorry, guys, thank you so much for your super chats. Um, uh, since I finally caught a live, just want to say happy baby shower day and hi, mom, hi, Amanda. Oh. Thank you. Yes, it was Yay. beautiful. I posted it up on my stories if you guys are interested on my Instagram, actually, saying. Um, thank you for the super chat. And then we have another one here. Thank you so much. I relish learning from these brave, strong, beautiful humans. Oh, that's so nice. I can't thank you enough for speaking your truth. Well, thank you for your contribution and everyone who's watching. We have over a thousand people here, which is really oh, awesome. Yeah. Love to see that you guys are spending your Saturday night with us, or I guess it depends on where you're at in the world. Um, and then we have also, I noticed Chelsea was in the comments. Chelsea, um, she says, Chelsea Goodrich. Oh, she says, Chelsea, I love yeah. when you bring your mom on. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, everyone loves mom. She hasn't made an appearance in months. And I was like, mom, you have to do it. So I told her everyone, everyone loves mama. Whoa. And... Oh my goodness. Um, oh, what's your mom's name? Lisa. Lisa. We call yes. her Mama Bear. Mama Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Lee. Oh my goodness. This is my baby shower gift. Thank you. <laughs> That's very okay. kind of you. Thank you so much for your donation. Um, all right. And then, of course, yes, Jonathan is our moderator off camera. I forgot to mention. Thanks, babe. You're doing a killer <laughs> job. He's doing the switcher and all the things <laughs> and pinning some comments for me to check out. Okay. So let's see where do we want to go from here is there anything else that you want to talk about mom about the way that you think everything is kind of crumbled on screen for everyone to see in 18 seasons with this polygamy do you think it truly exposed that polygamy is really dangerous if you have the wrong mindset in cody's case you know in cody's case yes i mean because i know that there are a lot of polygamous families that are are doing well and and i would never judge anybody for you know, because I've watched other shows too, where they have other wives and and a husband, and I see husbands treat their wives with such respect, and and so maybe it works for them, and I'm I'm happy for that. In with the sister wives, I just am proud of all of them. I I would love to meet them because I I'm proud that they finally stood up for themselves and mm -hmm. their families, their children, and really st Janelle especially standing up for her boys, and you know I. I think that's great that she wanted to have her children with her even during COVID. And he was so against that when they would not abide by the rules of his rules, his rules. And they were pretty intense. 
And so he wouldn't even see his own children. So I was mm. proud that the moms really stood up for their children. And yeah, I think I yeah, want to comment on that. And then Amanda, get your take. So I want to make a disclaimer that I think consenting adults should be able to be in whichever type of relationship they want within their own boundaries mm -hmm. that they make up and that they are okay with. And people ask all the time, well, what about polyandry? And I'm like, polyandry is very different from polygamy. As far as I'm aware, polygamy is almost exclusively practiced with one man, multiple wives. They're not allowed to have other women or, or, or not other, I guess, other women or <laughs> other oh, men. Man. And it's very patriarchal. It can be very damaging. Like Amanda was saying, sometimes they're grooming girls at a very young age. There's a lot of underage brides in her family's case, incestuous relationships. So there's definitely dark twists and turns that it can go. Um, so I'm wondering then, is it possible to practice polygamy with one man, multiple wives in a healthy environment without religious context? Is it the religion that kind of tweaks things and turns it dark when you have like praise to the head of the household, don't have your own opinions, submission, all of that. Do you think maybe it's possible, Amanda, that people could practice polygamy in a healthy way from what you've seen? Well, there's a reason why polygamy is always coupled with religion. Like I've never, have you ever seen a woman who wanted to be like faithful to one man while he's having multiple relationships with all these women who are also faithful to him and there's no uh salvation at the end of their life that right. they're fighting for you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i think at least in american polygamy it's all religious and um that's that's what's keeping these women in here is religious manipulation there's a um i'm pretty sure canada actually outlawed polygamy completely because they did not find a single case of polygamy where there wasn't incest abuse hmm. neglect like like they mm. just were like hey well we well there's no one living it in a healthy way so we're just going to outlaw it completely because for whatever reason polygamy has these negative you know and this is the thing like i i have a lot of people being like oh you just hate all polygamous amanda i'm like it's, it's usually just like people from the order like why do you hate polygamy <laughs> like, it's not that i hate polyg like polygamy and if you look at it from like a perspective of like just the act of polygamy itself that that's not necessarily like the worst thing ever. It's everything that comes with it, right? It's the sexism, it's the racism, it's the mm. it's the neglect of the children, it's the to give your all to this man and, and, and your whole life and everything you are in hopes that you'll get the repay in the afterlife, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not healthy, it's just not a way of, that's why it has to be coupled with polygamy because no woman in the right mind's gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, coupled with religion, you mean? Religion, yeah, it has, you have yeah. to have this treat at the end of your life because I, my mom would say this all the time like there better be a throne waiting for me in heaven for all of this shit <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i think that's the tricky thing and that's the coercion that we talk about and the man manipulation of choice where it's the illusion that you have a choice but in reality you don't feel like you have a choice because you want the salvation you want the promise at the end our very first interview with someone whose family is, it was very interesting her dad wanted to be a polygamist but no one wanted to marry him again um she laughed so i can laugh but she was saying that yeah she was taught her whole life that she was going to grow up to be a polygamist wife and that she was meant to suffer and that was the, the thing it was your mm -hmm. job is to suffer now so that in the afterlife you're going to be taken care of mm -hmm. and so they kind of dedicate in a roundabout way dedicate their life to suffering because of the promise at the end which is so sad because we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. at the other end right we don't know what what life holds if there is an afterlife any of that and so what we do know is we have this present moment and it's upsetting to me that someone's willing to throw that away in hopes of something just based on faith. So yeah, I haven't personally seen anyone who's lived polygamy by choice, true choice, without coercion, without religion, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So I mean, of course, yeah, I'm open to that. If you're in the comments and you're like, that's me, let us know, because mm -hmm. we're definitely interested in that. We just haven't seen it, which is why we tend to be really hard on polygamy and um, not including the polyandry community, because I think that's very different, as we mentioned. Would you agree, Amanda? Yeah. And that's the thing is like, 
I do think that it could be, um, well, in any, take polygamy out of it in any relationship, if there's too much of this, like, fear-based, you know, guilt-based, we got to do this for the Lord, like, that's going to affect any relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so I have someone here in the comments, tell me if you guys have heard of this. Colts, have you heard about the minor Cody was courting and wanted to marry her? Robin and Cody were heavily involved with that relationship, a 17-year-old. Have you heard of this? Wow. Were they in the wow. AUB group? Yeah, within, yeah, Cody Brown. Wow. I have not heard it. I didn't hear of that. No, mom didn't hear of that. Mm -mm. And that's the scary thing. You see this happen a lot in the order, too, where the wives will coerce. Uh, they'll be a part of the coercion, which is kind of gross. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, it makes sense because it happens a lot. And we see it a lot in these interviews where the victims end up becoming the perpetrators yeah. because it's just this cycle and they're told they have to do something. And I would imagine this is complete speculation on my part. I've never been in a polygamous relationship, but I would imagine if I was in that situation, I would almost want to justify it to myself. So if I can convince someone else, it's good. Maybe I can convince myself it's good. It's this cycle of, no, it's right, and here's why, and justification, and ways to make it okay. Because, at least for me, I am very much a monogamous person. Like, I can't imagine sharing my mm -hmm. lovely husband. It makes me angry. So, <laughs> if the only reason they're doing this, again, if it's not like a polyandry situation where you are two consenting adults going in this, like, yes, I want multiple partners. That's my jam. Cool. But if we're talking about polygamy in the sense of they're only doing it for a reward in the afterlife, I imagine it'd be really difficult for someone who doesn't want to practice that way and doesn't want to share their man with anybody. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Mom? No, I agree. I remember, you know, growing up in the Mormon, mainstream Mormon, I was told that in the afterlife we would live the law of you know, plural marriage. That's and, right. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. And I think we were talking about that early this earlier today that I was saying, well, if if my mind is the same in the next life as it is now, I don't want to live that way. I don't want to do that. And they mm -hmm. said, but no, your heart will be softened and you'll be able to live it. And I remember thinking when I was really in the church, oh, I hope that's true because I, right now, I couldn't do it. I couldn't live it. I'm just, I want one man in my life. I just yeah. could not do that. So I don't know how that's possible. I need to correct myself because I knew I was saying it wrong. Polyamory. I was saying polyandry. Oh. Polyamory. Thanks, Anna. Consensual <laughs> non-monogamy. <laughs> Pregnancy brain. Um, <laughs> yes, polyamory is what I was meaning where everyone decides that they're okay with if I'm in a relationship with Jonathan, he can have a relationship with someone else and I can have another relationship with another man and everyone's okay with it. And you set boundaries and um, rules and all of that. And if that's your jam, awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as right. long as you're not hurting anybody mm -hmm. or courting minors. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Is there anything else? Um, oh, Richard, uh, would you mind if I posted this on the MSP Discord server? Please do. Go for it. That would be great. I think you mean Mormon Stories podcast. If you if you do, we just saw John yesterday and it was great. We had yeah, a little that was really nice. Little dinner with John and Margie. Yeah. Or Margie, I'm Margie. sorry. <laughs> they um, yeah. they came to LA. Random side note. Okay, is there anything else that we wanted to talk about or anything that we missed? Mom, can you think of anything that you wanted to talk about? No. Amanda, did we miss anything? I know we if you're just joining, we did start off talking about how it's dangerous glorifying these types of relationships on TV because people have a lot of misconceptions. People are coming up to you, Amanda, being like, how do I get a, another wife? And we see that in the comments a lot like, oh, this sounds great. Let's do polygamy as a man. And it's just really it's demoralizing. And it's also very insensitive to people who are being forced into polygamy underage. Amanda, you talked about this being forced to potentially marry your half sibling or your cousin yeah. and you're being groomed from a very young age and you're seeing this play out on screen and you're seeing society be OK with it and relaxing about polygamy instead of tightening up because it is illegal, <laughs> mm -hmm. but somehow it's still going on. Was there anything else that you wanted to add, Amanda, about the damaging effects of glorifying these relationships? Um, I, I had one little thing I wanted to add on what your mom had just said, how she was like, I, I hope they soften my heart in the afterlife to live polygamy because I can't do it at this day and age. Um, 
a lot of the times in these groups, because I, I did have a lot of women be like, oh, well, I live polygamy and I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. A lot of the times, what when you see a woman where it's very easy for her to live polygamy, she's not in love with her husband or she doesn't even mm. like There were times where I, I, like I had a friend who was like 16 who hated the guy they were basically forcing her to marry and she mm. was so excited for him to get another wife so that he would leave. So that your your mom just reminded me of that whole like that whole ideal of like of course it's hard to live like me when you love the man right when you mm -hmm. actually are in this relationship wholeheartedly so it bothers me so much too when people are like well jealousy is a sin you can't be jealous in polygamy but then if I'm not jealous I'm not in love you know I'm mm -hmm. not really here That's true. Yeah, that's yeah. For people who mm -hmm. want monogamous relationships, mm -hmm. that's very true for us. Right. And I think that's a really great point. Um, I think it was, was it Val and Chanel's interview where we talked, they're from the order as well. They talked about how, yeah, we were happy when dad didn't come around because he was so abusive. We yeah. didn't want to see him. And mm -hmm. his mom didn't really want to see him either. At least that's what I remember. I could be mistaken. We've done a lot of interviews on polygamy. Well, that sounds like but that. Yeah. So it seems like in that case, if you do have to do it just so you can get a place in heaven in their minds, it's probably better if you don't like the right. person. So there is no jealousy and it's like, yeah, 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 go, go do your thing and I'll see you in a month or whatever. So interesting point. Anything else you wanted to bring up before we go to your channel? No, I'm excited to talk. I have so many questions now about, um, <laughs> people and like everything you guys were taught. So we'll go over to my channel. We'll talk about all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So guys, if you stay on this link, YouTube will automatically, it should redirect you to Amanda's channel where we're going to switch over to her studio. It may take a second. So just bear with us. And we're going to talk about polygamy within the mainstream Mormon church, the church that my mom and I were born and raised in, how they teach that it is something that you will practice in the afterlife. And I did have the LDS, official LDS website pulled up to talk about a few things about how Joseph Smith practiced it in private or in secret. And um, it's going to be pretty juicy. So head over there. Before you go, though, hit the like button for that algorithm, um, especially if you leave a comment after the live is done. That also really helps boost the algorithm. And thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. Oh, we have another super sticker. Thank you so much, Haley Fitzgerald McQueen. It's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Mm. And if you do join us over on Amanda's channel, any super chats will be directly to her. So and with that, I guess that's all we have. Until next time, follow your highest excitement, be conscious and be well and go to Amanda's channel. <laughs>